So in this video, we're actually going to work through the same examples that we did on kind of the slides, kind of by hand, except we're going to do them in MATLAB. So I have this script called Complex Numbers and Functions. I'm gonna put a little breakpoint right here. We'll just step through these lines of code. So here are the complex numbers we're going to work with. Z1 is equal to seven plus four J, and Z2 is equal to a negative two plus 1.5 J. So you can see in MATLAB to deal with complex numbers, you actually just use the letter J. And this is in fact a purely imaginary number. It's equal to zero real and then one I. So it is a purely real or purely imaginary number. It's the same thing as the square root of negative one. So J is just a symbol for the square root of negative one. So now we've defined Z1, we've defined Z2. Doing complex number addition in MATLAB is simple. You just add them together with the plus sign. So if I wanted to add these two numbers together, I just use plus. So here's what we got in our example. When we add these together, we got five plus five and a half J. If I want to multiply them together, I just use the star. So it's shift eight. So the star operator or the multiply operator to multiply Z1 and Z2. If I do that, we get the quantity that we computed before of negative 20 plus two and a half J. In MATLAB, taking conjugates, you use the CONJ function. So we already computed the conjugate of Z1. We know the conjugate of Z1 should be equal to seven minus four J. So if we compute the conjugate here, that's indeed what we get. Same thing for Z2, we should end up with a negative two minus 1.5 J. And that's indeed what we get. So this conjugate operator, that's how you do that in MATLAB. What about computing the magnitude? Well, in MATLAB, to compute the magnitude of a complex quantity, you use the absolute value function. So if I take the apps of Z1, that's the same thing as computing the magnitude of Z1, and I get 8.0623. And if I compute the magnitude of Z2, I get 2.5. If I recall, by hand, we computed that the magnitude of Z1 was equal to the square root of 65, which is 8.0623, and that's exactly what we get. And you can do the same thing here. Go back to what we computed for the magnitude of Z2, and this is, in fact, what we get for the magnitude of Z2. What about the angle? Well, to compute the angle of a complex number in MATLAB, you actually use a function called angle. So computing the angle of Z1, we get 0.5191 radians, which is exactly the number of radians that we computed by hand. And to compute the angle of Z2, we get 2.4981, which again is the exact same phase quantity that we computed by hand in the slides. So for the most part, doing things in MATLAB is straightforward, a plus or a multiply, a conjugate operator, an absolute operator, and an angle operator. These will do all the type of basic computations that you want. This next set of code is actually going to plot these numbers in the complex plane. And you'll note I'm using some different functions here. I'm using the real function. And we'll also see what that does. So Z1 is this complex number. Real returns the real part, just like you think it would. And then the imaginary returns the imaginary part. So if I wanted to plot this complex number in the complex plane, I can hit figure, start the figure. I'll turn hold on to plot multiple things. And then I can plot that point at the rectangular coordinate seven and four. And I can plot Z2 at the rectangular coordinate at negative two, 1.5. And then I'll go ahead and clean up this plot a little bit. I'll turn the grid on, make the axes bold and label them with real and imaginary. And let's go ahead and change the X limit and the Y limit to just kind of zoom out a little bit. And we can even give it a title. So there are the numbers Z1 and Z2 in the complex plane. And then here I'm actually going to go ahead and draw the lines that connect the origin to the number in the complex plane. So I use the MATLAB line command to draw a line from the origin, 0, 0, so this point right here, to the point real part of Z1, imaginary part of Z1. So to the point, this blue dot right here. I can do the same thing to draw a line from the origin to the red dot using this command. So this is the first X coordinate and the first Y coordinate, zero, zero is right here. And then the next X coordinate is this value, the real part of Z2, which is this dot right here. And then the imaginary part is the second Y coordinate, which gives us this right here. So we can connect that and then I'll color it red so it's different. 
And if we want to, we can even label these points too. This is really the point Z1, so I'll write some text very close to this coordinate. This is at the along the x-axis at real of Z1, and it's along the imaginary axis, imaginary Z1. So that's where I'm going to place these pieces of text, but I'm going to offset them just a little bit by 0.2. So imaginary on Z1 plus 0.2, just to offset it a little bit so it's not right on top of the dot. I can see the Z1, and we'll do something similar for Z2. So this is just a simple MATLAB script showing you how to do some basic complex number operations and also how to plot these numbers in the plane and label your axes and label the points nicely. And all these computations match exactly what we did by hand in the previous videos in the slides.